All right, so what should we take off next? I'm really curious about what's behind here. And how they control speed. I think I'll take off this center screw here, or attempt to anyway, and see what happens. Oh, right, that's a weird screw. It's got a lot of grease on it. The outside of it's threaded and then it's got a hole in the center. Hmm, interesting. I have no idea what this does at this point. Let's see if anything comes apart. It doesn't appear to. So maybe that's just a plug for greasing this. Maybe that's how you would add grease to it. Hmm. I wonder if this would thread in there. No way. No way. <laughs> I have no idea if I'm right about this, but... Hmm. Anyway, that didn't do much, so I'm going to take this, what appears to be a trim ring off. Maybe there's something hidden behind there. I did notice that there's screws on the back side here, so that probably takes the whole unit off. Actually, we'll do that. We'll separate this whole thing from the gun. That screw appeared to be brass, and this one, uh, maybe not, maybe it was just discoloration. This one is steel. Uh, I don't know, let's see here. Yeah, it's just got a weird patina on it. And the screw, the heads of the screws are all messed up a little bit from somebody going at it with a bad screwdriver. I'm sure people will comment that this is a bad screwdriver. But what I mean by a bad screwdriver is one that the tip is all rounded up or, um, yeah, just completely not sized properly. If you see weird cuts and pauses in my video, that's because I'm editing out sneezes. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. Let's take a peek inside here. Holy... What is going on here? It appears to be some sort of clutch mechanism. What the heck? Oh yeah, okay. Give me a second to figure this out inside of my head and then I'll try to explain it to you guys. It appears to me that that is some sort of pressure plate and it's threaded on the outside and this nut, this handle here, our dial is threaded on the inside. So if I keep threading this will actually come apart. So there we have that. And then this piece will only come apart, I believe, if I take these screws out. There's some sort of screen mesh in there to stop dirt from getting through. Anyway, I'm going to set this aside for now and let's take a closer look at this to see what this actually does so that I can figure out what this does. So this is geared to the other side apparently, so in order to figure out what this does, I'm going to have to take this cover off and make sure we got a good bite with our screwdriver before we go turning and wrecking these screws.
I am assuming I'm going to find a lot of grease inside of here for two reasons. One, because there's a bunch of grease inside here. And two, because there's grease all over the threads on those screws. There's a wavy washer to keep pressure on a bearing. And there's some grease, not a huge amount, but there's some grease. So there's two shafts here. And when I turn the other side, this, this shaft is this shaft, just the other end of it. And it looks like, oh, I kind of forced this a little bit and it's turning. Seemed like it was stuck before. Somebody's had a wrench on that nut, that brass nut's rounded off a little bit. Anyway, it looks like we're going to have to keep taking screws out and keep taking this apart. So, I'll take this part of the tool off and see if that reveals the true operation of this gun. I'm really interested to see what is inside here. <clears throat> the moment of truth, I hope. Uh oh. How about we take this piece off because it's probably holding something in place. It only comes so far. No, it's one of these grease plugs as well, it appears. So it's the same as this other grease plug, which goes in the cover here. Now we will use our universal wrench. Wow, this is a really bad idea. It's not tight. Sacrifices must be made in order to make a video go efficiently. retains a bearing and there's a shaft that goes through this way and there is another screw and cap over here so maybe I need to remove all of that before I can get this apart that's what's gonna happen whether or not that's the way it's supposed to be done I do not know Yeah, I'm still not really sure. Let's take the handle off. Must be getting pretty close to revealing the, the inner secrets here. There's not many pieces left to take off. How does that handle stay on? Are you kidding me? Is there a screw down in there? Oh, there must be a screw from the top. Wow. It's a really interesting build design. I'm not really sure what to do next. I mean, I wasn't sure what to do from the start, but I don't really want to pry on it too much. There's definitely something holding that together. I'm thinking that maybe that nut comes off and this shaft pulls out. I could be completely wrong. But let's see if I can turn this. Oh, it's just finger tight. 
I doubt it's supposed to be just finger tight, but it's finger tight. Should I say finger tight once more? Finger tight. Oh, oh, oh. All right, we have a worm drive here. Wow, if this was made back in the 50s, that would be a very expensive piece. Machined out of a solid piece of aluminum. With all that detail, wow. <clears throat> anyway, let's set that piece aside for a second. Now, oh wait a second. Oh, this is the motor. This is the motor. The, oh, the air drives in through, aha. Figured it out. Okay, so this valve, when it is opened, let's see, it's closed there. Oh, when it's opened, that dowel pin, or what I thought was the dowel pin, is actually a port. So this goes on the front of the tool like that. That's how it originally was attached. And the air comes in through here and goes, some of it goes in there, but some of it comes out that hole. See, if we'll plug this and blow in here, when we close this valve, it closes that port. Not sure if you guys can see that, but there the port is open so when we have compressed air hooked up to this which I might have to do now because that's really neat the air comes in through this little port so the air goes through here and out through that hole which amazingly is brass sleeved and then this guy is a fan that's what that thing is I was like what kind of weird gear is that but that is a fan and the air travels through the port and blows on the fan and turns this and then the worm drive turns that guy which is gear reduced yeah and turns and eventually turns this so we've got two gear reductions. This is your main drive shaft. The worm gear runs, oh wow, yeah. This would turn really fast. Then we have one worm gear here, and then a secondary worm gear. I know this is not the proper terminology. They're not supposed to be called worm gears, just worms. So we have this Let's see, put it together a little bit so you guys can see. We have this turning this shaft that then turns this shaft on another worm drive. And that is what feeds the wire. So we've got our guy that sits on top here and clamps the wire between the two rollers. And the air motor would turn this very slowly and feed through here. And that's why this is basically a brake disc that applies pressure to this flex plate thing. You can see it's spring loaded. Wow, this is built really cool. I think this has been sitting in my basement for like six years and I didn't even remember that it was there or know what it was. Yeah, so this applies pressure to that and slows it down. So when you turn this out, it pushes against that plate, which slows it down. That is really cool. What I'm gonna have to try to do is find a fitting 
that goes on to this so that I can hook it up to my air compressor just so that I can make it turn. <laughs> That's really cool. Alright, I think what I'll do now is a time lapse of me putting it back together and I will also upload a clip of the real-time assembly just because I don't want this video to be too long. So what I'll do is in this video I'll put a time lapse of me putting it back together but if you want to watch me actually putting it together in real time you can go and watch another video. Alright, so see if I can get this back together now. I would really like to send it to ABOM79. I don't know that uh, he would have a use for it because this is a wire feed type and the one that he has is actually powder I think but maybe I'll message him and see what he says. I would also like to send it to AVE or Arduino versus Evil and see if uh, he will do a uh, review on it <laughs> or a, a disassembly. That one. I'll just try to give it a little, a little burst of air to see if I can get it to turn at all. Now that it's together. And it did turn for a second. So it did turn a little bit there, but only for a second and then it stopped. I think a big part of the problem is uh, it probably requires very high airflow. So. so there we have it back together. I'm not sure what this hole is for here, but I think it might be to attach it to a lathe. So this would be attached to the tool post and then a part spins in the lathe and it applies metal to the spinning part so that you're not holding it the whole time. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get air to it, enough air to it to produce enough torque to actually pull any wire through. So um, yeah, maybe if another YouTuber takes it and uh, hooks it up properly with a decent air compressor maybe they can get a different result and that would be really cool well, I didn't find out what these things were for this is some sort of wrench I'm assuming and this is some sort of spanner wrench maybe to take off the the wheels in there so once again this is the Metco Type 2E metalizing gun. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.